kind of taking the overarching trends and making them makeable and also like really universal because we know our customer is a very broad range woman. Like we're pretty proud that we go up to 5XL. It's challenging sometimes and <laughs> the big threat is one day we're gonna have to do that feral jumpsuit in right. six sizes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but projects like these, we can get away with probably two, three, four sizes because they're sort of the oversized look, which is really on trend and continuing to be on trend. So these patterns, uh, yeah, they are on our website right now. They're going to be available in September. So can you talk about some of the more popular projects that people will be working on uh, this fall? Right. So the next slides are things that we would go to for inspiration. Um, we look all over the place for, you know, filtering it down to the trends that are going to relate to our products, our customer. So there are lots of other knitwear trends that may be coming for 2017-18, but for us, these are the ones that work really well with our yarns. Um, Rapture, again, back to the ponchos and ruanas and sort of big blanket sweaters. Textured Codigan. We love this, it's sort of like a big, unstructured, very cozy weekend throw on coat. Um, taking the men's um, boyfriend sweater to the slouchier and slouchier is the slouchy collegiate and big tunic. A way to show off like really gorgeous textured yarns, marled yarns, very simple stitches that could be like a beginner kind of sweater. Okay, so starting off with Rapture, can you tell us a little more about this trend and what stitches work well for it? Okay, um, we've been having a lot of fun with this uh, Rapture trend um, and it's a great place to use um, just like textural stitches because you have like a large surface area to use your texture stitches and let the yarn kind of do the, the talking. Um, it's also a great place to use crochet. We always try to cater to our knitters and crocheters because um, we, we also love both of those skills. So this is a great place to use crochet. Yeah, so um, here's some of our designs. Could you tell us um, the inspiration behind these and how you pick the yarn for them? And we're going to ask um, Emily and Shannon to help model. We got the projects here. And then after, um, during lunch, if you guys want to come uh, look at any of the projects, we'll have them here. So um, when we are looking at trends, then we look at our own yarns and see how our yarns can um, mimic these trends and, and uh, make them into a hand knit or crochet project. So these two actually, um, yeah. These two ponchos and the one at the end are all crochet and they use like a really cool um, color blocking technique and then you run stitches to make that flat look which is so cool. And then uh, the second from the end is a reverse fair out from our new Peyton's alpaca blend. So. <laughs> It's, it's deliberate stranding, obviously, and, and instead of hiding your stranding, you're going to expose the stranding, and then this is the same yarn, alpaca blend, but in crochet, so you can have a feel of the difference in fabric. Alpaca blend, to me, is just gorgeous, so beautiful crochet. Even though it's a chunky gauge, it still has a great, and again, it's like we were saying about alpaca, it has some beautiful great. Again, so um, can you tell us a little more about this trend, like who you see wearing it? Um, again, it's, it's all in the styling, like look at this cool girl with the fur hat, I mean that's like she's going edgy with it, and then you go really traditional with the feral one, or the very simplistic kind of engineered nib. Again, it's a showpiece kind of garment for your yarn to do the talking. You can just do a simple rib. We love the plaid effects. We love um, that, like I was saying, the engineered rib is doing all the detail for you and making that knitting less boring. Um, so those kind of projects are exciting. And, and a lot of these have uh, pockets on them, like a lot of the ones here. Is that something that's uh, difficult to do? 
I know you can, like, the simplest way would be to do these patch pockets that you could add after, after you've done your cardigan, after you wear it a couple times and you're like, I really wish I had somewhere to put my thong, you can add a patch pocket after the fact. Um, if you want to make a, like an inset pocket, like the one at the top, you would just uh, take that into consideration when you're, when you're working out your design and uh, like make a pocket lining, figure out where it's going to go at the front of your garment and where the lines would go. Um, I even think that you could use your swatch to be a patch pocket. Also a great place to have these big collars and blends of texture and stitch work. So the one on the far right is actually crochet, so it's not just a knit trend, but definitely can go both ways. So our next uh, trend is budgie bleaches. So you're going to be hooked live is next to me right now, and she's filming. And she's got my ears. <laughs> we always love classic cables. So this is just a new body for those that palette of cables. Um, again, it's this boyfriend sweater, the oversized pasture bum, you know, borrow it from your boyfriend kind of shaping. Um, take it for your boyfriend and then take it back. Yeah. <laughs> boyfriend dumps you. Okay, give me that sweater. <laughs> It's a place where you can do dipped edges, a little bit of contrast striping. Um, they do look more intermediate. Are you able to, are these more intermediate patterns? Or are you able to get this look with easier patterns? Yeah, like the blue one is just sort of stocking stitch with some stripe work. That would be considered more easy. Um, so yeah, you can, you can go, to, I don't know if it's beginner so much because there is some detail with the button bands and picking up v-necks and things. So. So can we talk a little about, so these are all runway um, images, can you talk a little about how to decode them for your own projects and take those trends and make them um, modern and fashion wearable? <laughs> okay, well the great thing I think with um, knitting trends is that even though they're a trend, it's always harkens back to like a classic cable knit sweater. Like, that's that cable knit sweater you can wear that in 20 years and it's still fashionable. Um, so I think to bring it like a trend into the now is maybe change different colors, play around with some, like the different yarns that you're going to use. Cable placement is really cool and mix, mixing different um, cables and textures. Uh, can you talk about the men's sweater a little and how uh, I'd love to talk about that men's sweater and those shirts. <laughs> Yeah, so that sweater um, was made for a man, but <laughs> strong enough for a man and made for a woman. <laughs> There's an analogy in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's like a classic cable dad sweater with a shawl collar and the leather buttons, but like I, I think it just it works for a large variety of of people, age ranges, and genders. Yeah, and the, those, both those gray sweaters are Peyton's classic wool, the worsted gauge, so that's like our tried and true, and that yarn has been around since, oh, I think the 
early 80s, sir? <laughs> 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 Yeah, we, we chose these slides to kind of show the variety of um, elements you can either put on or strip away. Um, the most versatile and more beginner body would be the sort of drop shoulder. You wouldn't necessarily do the um, intarsia two color, but if you just did that whole sweater and that brown mix with the big drop shoulder, that's a very beginner type project. You then could go to where you got the fully fashioned raglan, which was like one of my favorite things when you're just doing plain stock and stitch, because once you get to the raglan, you get some little interest. And I don't know if any of you have ever used the needle to do the decreasing and you know, I hope you like this. Dance or pieces ready to wear or sweaters. That's a nice detail. Or just in the pink one, you see that ribbing going down the raglan. Again, it's sort of an engineered placement. Um, those are the kind of things we love to detail into patterns and it takes a lot of forethought even though it's a very simple knit for us we have to kind of plan it out the other thing you can do is put a bit of fringe on they've got like little tassels on that illustration or just using very textured yarn and mixes different cables okay. so we talk a bit about these garments and how to achieve uh, the best texture for this and what yarns to use and stitches? Um, and we just put on, again, our, I guess it's our fall favorite yarn, the new alpaca blend wool. Um, you can see the stitch definition is really gorgeous in this. And that's like a split hem tunic. Then the slide shows much simpler stitches. <laughs> We've come to her. They like it. Take it in. I think they like it. <laughs> we might have to make sure that we have that one after it because we have it. But again, this is something that crochet can translate into. So, what ones of these are crochet and which ones are, are knit? The Assembly Soft project at the far right is. Okay, so then we're going to move into an overarching um, trend of homespun. Can you tell us a little more about this? Yeah, we, we put this in more as um, just relative to a lifestyle thing. This has been a shift the last few years. The appreciation, I guess, for handmade and how that obviously filters into all of our work. Um, but we love that in the very highest end, you know, Italian Vogue down to, you know, what you see at H&M and everywhere, these, at least, um, you know, a nod to the handmade and the handcrafted and the imperfect. So this is a wonderful thing that we can, you know, get that appreciation out there that things that are handmade have beauty. Um, these most simple things, like this amazing huge superstars over here, you know, you know those are made by hand and you know, there's a lot of value and worth to it and we are hoping, you know, it inspires people to want to learn to knit. So that's the environment we're currently in, in fashion and in lifestyle. It, it tr trickles into home deck too, you'll we'll see that in the next slides. So let's, let's use that energy, I guess. Um, these are things that were for fall 2017, gorgeous collections of sort of handmade mixes of different stitch work and, and textures. I think I die in that Pringle of Scotland. <laughs> so long. Uh, and then this is just like editorial, very high end, high fashion magazine, you know, with nods to hand knit stuff um, and street fashion during all the um, Prêt-à-Porter shows, these are the people milling around and there's really cool, very yarny stuff, which you know really excites us when we see like that fringe coat. I would love that thing. <laughs> so can you talk a bit about 
talk about how we adapted this trend into our patterns? Um, so coming this year, we saw that super scarves were going to be like, a huge thing, and they literally are huge. Um, they're nice and cozy. So what actually makes a super a scarf a super scarf? Um, yeah. We sort of deemed anything over, I think, 100 inches is sort of um, ideal and about 10 inches wide. Um, or so, necessary or for the cold Canadian winters. Yes, exactly. Um, so we sort of drew inspiration from what we were seeing. We wanted to incorporate a traditional granny stitch into a more contemporary look. Um, and also there's, in the granny square, there's a bit of an ombre effect going on as well that we it's been, that's been around for a few years now. Um, and also we have a little double layer fringe going on with the pink and red one as well, so. Here we wore the super scarves on the slide. Oh, yes. Yeah. So you can see the mix of yarns we used. Um, Shetland Chunky, which is a wool acrylic blend, and then Matt Roping. Wool and acrylic and Matt Roping as well. Can you talk a little bit about these patterns and how important that spicy and warm color palette is for uh, for this trend? Yeah. Sure. Um, we do a lot of um, kind of research into color trends and what's coming um, for future seasons. And then we also develop a lot of our own um, shape ranges for our yarns. So it's really cool to be able to see like in 2018, this this color palette is going to be um, popular, and then actually be able to create that in our in our yarns for projects that we want to make. So this whole like spicy vibe has been going on, and um, it's really wearable colors. Uh, so we've been uh, developing these colors for quite a long time, and they seem to always be popular, and they're easy to wear. They look great on a large variety of people, and they really kind of em embrace that cozy home hand handmade. Uh, Shannon's just going to put on the Chloe sock shawl. So we used our sock yarn, which is at a four-ply gauge, to do this crochet shawl. So it's more like a real stamper to crochet for. And you can see we do a lot of ombre and variegated, which that's when we get excited about trends like this global market, because you can see that the super value is actually space dive and that striping. It's just a great place to play with these palettes. And what's the idea behind using the hip squeak for the slippers? Um, so I wanted to give kind of like a shearling feel to these uh, crocheted slippers and uh, so I used, we have a burnout baby yarn called Pip Squeak that has that really fuzzy thing so I used a baby yarn for the inside of slippers and it's just, it's really fun to have so many yarns to choose from and be like, I'm going to use this to get this look which we normally use that yarn for baby baby blankets and stuff so it makes cozy. Yeah, we've done like trapper hats with it too and it's very cute to use inside. Can you tell me um, a little bit about the yarns that best uh, suits this trend? Uh, well, there's the pips we were just talking about, salty chunky. Um, all of these are majority of these are heavier gauge or quicker gauge, so you get the sort of gutsier stitches, and especially for those super scarf look, you can even double them up to make it really really quick. Mega bulky is one of our heavier yarns. You know, pack a blend up there and make your home deck or the newer yarns. Um, again, it's about stitch definition, and all of them have their own sort of little color story. Um, there's many colors that typically cross over in each yarn that are gonna be the most popular, but then each yarn kind of gets its own personality with a different shape range. Okay, so this is Unburdened Trend. I'm sure you guys have all seen pom-poms and tassels and um, things around. So can you tell us a little more about um, this trend and this craft at home trend? Okay, well, I think 
everybody loves this trend and we're so excited that it's reaching a broader audience. Um, so just like this combo of textures that you can use to, to create your space and kind of like put your mark in your home, you don't have to like, you don't have to know how to knit or crochet and you can really express yourself with the uh, with the colors in your home easy way to do that and I think like um, like the social media the, the Instagram and stuff you just there's so many inspiring projects out there so we've been really excited to see bringing that back into the home and not not just for blankets anymore so pom poms and tassels so this is a trend that's going to be really big this fall the craft yarn council um, is taking it as their trend that they're behind. So it's a good thing to jump on and I think you'll be seeing it a lot of it in the industry. Can you tell me a little bit about this trend and where you've been seeing it? Um, well, we've seen a lot of it in accessories, on um, bags, shoes even, earrings, you know, tassel earrings. Um, it's, it's been around in, in kids stuff for quite a few years now. Um, I feel like you don't have to be a knitter or a crocheter to love it. It's it's um, wonderful. Like once you get the hang of a clover pom pom maker, you can go like crazy and make a lot, a lot of pom pom. So um, I feel like uh, even though we probably all of us have seen it for a few years, we're going to continue to see it for probably two or three more years. So can you talk about a few of the projects that we incorporated? In? Sure, so um, when we've been doing a lot of lookbooks, which feature knit and crochet patterns, and now we're um, also incorporating like uh, decorating stuff, like yeah, I'm throwing a baby shower, let's make a cool pom-pom fun tamer with tassels. So it's a really fun way to just kind of tie everything in together. Um, and it's fun to figure out where you can put a pom-pom. <laughs> Which I feel like is anywhere. Uh, so. No, no, wherever you want to put it, you tie that pom pom up there. Um, <laughs> so we have pom poms and tassels, but then also like incorporating crochet into wall hangings. We've been doing a little bit of weaving and that kind of thing. So yeah, it's pretty easy to incorporate it into. Fun. Yeah, super fun. Yeah. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how? You can make it a little more content. Remember showcase all the great blankets and pillows we've been doing the last year or so and then we threw a super scarf in there which is sort of that whole spirit of cozy wrapped up warm the pillow that Shannon is showing is a crochet pillow with a mix of bobble stitch and fringe the fringe, tassel, pom-pom, all that yarn element stuff is all really, really important. And then these are pictures from our uh, Gray Matters lookbook that we did um, a year ago uh, and a garment. Could you tell us a little bit about these? Uh, yeah, so this Gray Matters was a home deck book that we focused on the color gray. And uh, it's like these neutrals, but if you just combine them in, in fun ways, to your home, because we're all looking for ways to use more yarn. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about the yarns that are best suited for this trend? Uh, sure. Um, for home deck, like, uh, we often use kind of um, machine washable yarns, yarns that are going to be able to withstand like being made into blanket forts and stuff. <laughs> um, and our new Burnett Maker yarn it comes in home deck and fashion colors, and that's been a, a really big favorite of ours too. It's like a, a tubular yarn, nylon, polyester. You get it in your bags. You get it in your bags. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and blanket, Burnett blanket yarn is like a really thick chenille yarn, so it's uh, very cozy and it works up so fast. So if you see a trend, it's easy to, to make that 
A small collection as well. We yeah. did some really beautiful home deck stuff. There's a beautiful cable. Thing.
North Durham Council, and if you go on their website, you'll see all the standard sizing. What I love is they have baby, they have foot lengths, I think. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times with kids' stuff, it's very challenging to figure out, you know, what's the difference between size six or eight and a kid, and that's a great resource for you to look up sizing. Uh, any other questions? Yes. So that graph that you showed there, so long one, is that one of the ones that we available in September for Saturn? So the question is, is the long uh, gray cable tunic is one of the ones uh, that will be available in September, and the answer is yes. That's all pack of blood. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Well, come see us later if you want to come touch and see any of the samples. Make but a pom pom up right now. Make a pom pom. And come make a pom pom. Thanks for joining me. Gotta go. Thank you so much for.